Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Thursday edition of JC3D. Today what I'm going to do for you is 3D model a Lionel train, and this is one of the oil ones. You can actually look in the description, hopefully today, and this is a special request from one of the viewers, maybe three weeks ago, something like that. And you can click that link down there, and it'll take you to um, what another viewer recommended was that I use my Google Drive. So I figured out how to go in there, make the public folder. You click the link. You can download this scene. It is saved in Cinema 4D R25. Sometimes Cinema Scenes will open in older versions of the program, so that might work for you. But you can open this up, and you'll be able to open the scene like this. It'll have the three guides loaded in, and it should have this cube right here. So I'll do a little dance, maybe about five minutes. No, it's good. Yeah, if you want to download that and work along, um, that might be fun for you. A couple of other people have asked for it, so there you go. Uh, let's see. So I pretty much just set the scene up here that I uploaded that um, they just have the images put in and they're scaled. And they're not even really scaled perfectly. Because every time you get into this situation, you're, I'm taking a photograph on my table. And in this case, I'm using an iPhone. Um, it's going to warp the object. Because if you look, the camera lens is warped. It's got a little curve to it, just like your eyeball has a curve. And... Um, Basically, it's distorting the images. Um, so if you go back, you put it on zoom in two, which I've done for all these on level two zoom in, it reduces the distortion, that fisheye, um, just a little bit, but it's still there. Um, so you kind of have to deal with it. Uh, if you have perfect CAD files, they don't have any human being taking reference photos. So you can kind of just nail the, the CAD or go by like the dimensions. But 3D is really not perfectly tuned for that kind of work like if you want to do pro engineer or you want to do what's that other one there autocad so the thing with those programs is you're going to go in there and they're going to have a tab and that tab is going to have this hierarchy it's kind of similar like when i'm putting things over here and i've got you know a sweep and i put a couple of different objects and i make it go i'm using the hierarchies but in mechanical engineering they'll have the whole entire history of the part right there in a big long huge hierarchy like I, I cut this out i added this i put this ring on i beveled this and if it's just a fundamentally different way that the program is geared to work than these programs and again these programs can be a little bit more non-linear you know you don't really need to have all that kind of control but anyway we're in cinema 4d there's a little bit of lens distortion in these images but here we go i'll try to speed through this also, when I loaded this, I do this all the time. I had to switch this over here to the left view. The default's the right view. But as you load things in, you start moving around, you realize it's going crisscross backwards from the top view. So you flip that. I flip that to the left view. And then it sort of behaves like I, would, I think it should. Okay, so the way the process usually starts out is you look for the simple shapes. So I'm seeing like this cylinder right here. So I'll just grab that. Grab a cylinder. Rotate it. Boom. I'm gonna go in here and just kind of make it the size of this thing. Sort of like this. All right. Looks pretty decent. Now, those caps at the end there. I think the way that I'll do that is just make another cylinder. And then I'll make it a lot shorter. I'm gonna bring it over here. Now you could use an oil an oil uh, can shape for this, the right here, oil tank. But um, you can also do it with this oil. I mean, I could use an oil tank here, I guess, too. Since it is an oil tank, might as well go for it. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just rotating it like this. So bring it over here. And then I'm going to play with the dimensions. Boom. Let's see. I guess I can really hit the stuff from this one. So let's do, 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 do. Pretty good. Now, did I lower that other one? Yeah, I must have. Uh, no, it looks like I didn't. I'm just going to try to make sure that this sucker here is at the right height. Go down a little bit. And make it bigger again. Boink go back to this ending make that a lot shorter right here now 
Now these guys look a little polygony, so you can increase this, go like 32. Uh, 32. And then add some fillets. So you're just getting this little line here, right? This is the difference between Windows and Apple. So this is a Windows computer, <laughs> theoretically, right? Now here's an Apple one. You just add a fillet. And then, does this have one? This one kind of sort of uh, should work here. Let's see. Boom. All right. Bevels. Yeah, I don't know. It says that in the Steve Jobs book. If you ever read that, he talks about bevels. So in 3D, bevels are kind of a cool thing because no object, when you look around, after I read that little part in that book, you never see an object in real reality that doesn't have a bevel. doesn't matter if I'm looking at the monitor, the light lamp thing, the walls, the trimming in the walls. Every single thing I'm looking at has a bevel. And the more luxurious the item, the more time they spend on those little fillets and bevels. Okay. <clears throat> Boom, boom, boom. That looks decent to me. So what I'll do is pop that on the other side with a little symmetry tool. Boom. It's got the wrong mirror plane. So you play around with that and then you get that over there. Okay. Now this had a couple of rings going around it. I'm just going to group everything, hide it. And you see these rings here, that, 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 that. So let's see. And I'm going to decide if I want to make them out of spheres or, yeah, I mean, they kind of look like half spheres to me. I think that's what I'll do. So I'll grab a sphere like this. Boom. And then I'm going to grab a cloner. Twink. The default's this grid here, right? And you can adjust it if you want. But there's a couple other modes, rate like radial, like that. Now I can go in here and steal that radius from the cylinder, right there, right char, copy that. Then we'll go up here to this radius, just paste it, and then I'll rotate it like this, boom, and then kind of like get it into position. Now, how many of these there are? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six times four. You could do math in these little things here. Six times four, boom. And then I might want to turn this on now. I also want to make sure this is in the same height as the cylinder there. So I'm just going to go into coordinate manager. I made it a quick child of the cylinder because that's what I'm trying to match. And looks pretty cool. Everything looks good. So I think we're okay. I mean, this one looked off there, but oh yeah, that was the one. Okay, it said Z. Usually that up and down one's Y, so it just threw me off. That's because I had rotated the whole uh, thing there. All right, so now make these spheres a lot smaller. Scale them down. Pop this off so I can see my guide. Mm, something like that. I uh, just am eyeballing it really now. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so it just hits the half part of the sphere like that. All right. I'll take this detail now. On a symmetry tool, you can only have one child. So if you want to have a bunch of brothers and sisters, you've got to take that child, option G it, and now you have a, a null parent. So now I can add this in right there, and it's going to be in the, whoops, the symmetry there. Sure, then what I'll do is hide everything. And I can still tell where that thing's located like this. So it's right there. And I'm going to grab and copy it. Uh, you could, instead of doing that, you could go down here and make a cloner right here, an instance. And then this instance, you can push over, center it like around those points like that. And then that'll work too. It's like that. That way, if you do something to this first one right here, like say I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to make those a little smaller. It's going to happen to all of them. Like that. Alrighty, so what do I want to do next? This is going to be pretty fun down here. I'll use the volume tool for that. I don't want to just jump right into that. So let's see. Seeing as I'm going to use the volume tool, what I'll do is I, I'm thinking about this piece right here. Um, 
So what I think I'm gonna do is just gonna, I'm gonna trace this overall shape right here. Maybe I'll mirror it. And then with that little flat piece, I'll make a front piece and a top. All right, got a couple comments here. Good morning. Um, is there an oil tank primitive in Cinema 4D? Okay, so this comment must have been a little bit in the past. So I did do the um, oil tank there for the, the tips. But I'm, you know what? I don't really know if I like the bevel. If I would have done cylinders, I might have had a little more control on the bevel, but it might have been harder to make the oil tank hats there. Um, another one just rendered my funny comment obsolete. Okay, so we're all caught up now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me see. Now what I will do is back to where we're it. 3D model right here. I'm just going to copy this like so. Boom, boom, boom. Remember, if you want to have a nice corner like that, put three points close to each other. Boom. That should be a T-shirt. All right, boom, boom, boom. Okay, now I'm only going to go halfway in now. My theory for that is that it's it's fundamentally screwed up. And it's... I'm not really copying it perfectly because I don't have a CAD file. So, if you do half of it, if you mirror your mistakes, they're, they're going to look kind of corrected. Even though that sounds a little bit weird. But the, people won't be able to tell as much. But if I were to trace this whole thing, it would just look off. It, it would... It would lift the warpness that the camera has in this shot and it would put it into the model which Stardy is doing but it takes it away a little bit if you do it like this so I'm just going to go halfway boom boom coming in here I think like this oh you know what that goes down there so never mind more like so. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. I got that trace, I believe. Burp. And. You know, I don't see any reason why not to just, uh, if I add this right now, it'll just create this hole when I extrude it rather than having to cut it out after. So let's just go for it. Okay, pop that onto B-spline, like so. And then, what I like to do is just kind of go in here and like kind of like ignore the guide and just imagine that, you know, these things here are supposed to be flat. So I'll just select this, this little run right there. Then go down here, and then these three over here are kind of like a squisher. I'm gonna scale it down, and they're all just squished flat, perfectly flat, just like that. And I could just go on faith because the computer did it, right? Boom, boom, boom. This one's already zero. What's this one? Like that. Go here. Grab this stuff. Maybe not that one. Same deal. Flatten it out. Wait, what the heck was that? Let me try that one more time. Hm. Didn't like that. Boom. Okay. This guy. Flatten it like a pancake. Then we go and add an extrude right here, like this. Pop that spline underneath it, and we're going to go inspect it in 3D because it's going to be a little longer than I want. I only want this to be like a little thin thing, like maybe 2.0. Let's go 5.0. I don't know. Something half that. 2.5. Okay, now it's located over here on this side. So yeah, pop that over, right? So like that. That's where these different views are going to come in handy, sort of. You can see the height's a little off, but it's all right. I'm going to get the width there from it. And I'll just take the height from this one. Now, what we want to do next is mirror this bad boy. 
boom like that uh, the axes is looks as though it's in the center there and I just got to find the mirroring about which there we go voila now this will all hop into a symmetry another one do 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 boom all right now that makes me wonder sometimes if you have mirrors the mirrors reflect light well what if the universe made a gigantic mirror <laughs> you know like wouldn't that be weird because the light would go in the mirror and do something different if the mirror wasn't there but anyway there's that mirror and boom 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 now i need a top plate for this so while i'm thinking of it you know there's no time like the present this entire process is is pretty much non-linear i mean you could literally do any part of this thing first uh no one would ever know uh, what he oh he did the wheels first he did that first you have no idea This to here ish, right? And then um I'll have to fig figure out what's going on there. <clears throat> okay, let's just I'm just this is right in my face right here, so we just hide everything and just trace this sucker off right here. Now how would I want to do that? Um I think what I'm going to do is be jumping this all underneath the volume tool. So these are all just going to sort of click together. So why don't I just not put the horn? Because it's just like kind of a circular curve there. Let me just look at the thing. Oh, no, that's not true. Okay. So, yeah. Let me just trace this off. It helps to have the thing right in front of you too. You can look at it. Like I thought this was going back in space, but it's not. So let's see here. Do, 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 do. A little bit closer together right here. Where is that going to happen? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now nah, it's kind of like cleanup time here. <laughs> Phew. Let's just take all these right there. Oh, what's going on? All those right there and scale them in the X like that. And then all these. Right there. And the Y. And then all these. And the X. Wait, there you go. Uh, maybe this one too. Do, 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 do. Squish. Whoops, did that work? Okay. Now make this a beast spline. Lo and behold. And also, you see right here, I want to make sure that this is in the center. So I'll take this, move it over, just like that. <clears throat> and you see down here, X, put that at zero. So that's in the center for sure. And you see here, you're getting this little curve. whoop de whoop Just pull this closer. That's an example of the three points kind of coming together. Boom. Now... I kind of like the depth of this one down here. So let's grab that guy, this extruder right here. He's already got the depth set correctly. Boom, boom. Let me just look at it. If you hit the hotkey S, it'll look at your object that you have selected. Put, put it in the context of the whole thing here. Select these things and move them over to the front. Something's happening there. What it is ain't exactly clear. Okay, so it doesn't go back all the way. It goes to here. Whoops. Close enough for government work. Boom, boom, boom. 
symmetry tool. Drop that down. Boink. There we go. Okay. Now, we'll cut that out in a second here. Cut it out. I remember that from being a kid. TGIF. Boom, boom, boom. This goes here. Down to here. And then this is just going to cut that hole out. Okay, so let me just save this scene, grab that volume tool, like so, and start to drop everything in there. Well, that's gonna be a, I'm gonna cut that out. Maybe I'll just put a, a cut here. And drop everything else underneath this volume tool to get them to connect together. So they're all under here. Okay. <laughs> now let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm just laughing because of Alexa in the background there. At this point, I gotta get rid of that. It just drives me nuts. Even that hor horizon will drive me nuts. Okay. So all these different parts here. So what I'm trying to do basically is just hide this so I don't see it. Is that that whole thing right there? Yeah, that's all that. Okay. So it's all these parts I want to go into here. Oop. And wait a minute. Did that screw something up? I don't think so. So what is this guy? Oh, that was that. No, he. Okay, so that was there. So I need another symmetry for this guy here. Boom. So symmetry of a symmetry. I just wanted to get down there at that end right down there. So there we go. Now, I'll drop that underneath the volume builder. Okay. Didn't like that. See how it just disappeared like that? So the volume builder, the default, it's kind of like hopelessly optimistic that you're going to be able to use it at that setting. It's never going to really work out. So the way I deal with it is I go in here and I divide by two. Make sure you save your scene. And this is kind of like voxels are like pixels. So this is, see the little pixels right here, that little cut. So it gives it more to work with. So it's going to give it twice as much when I divide by two, I think. And that starts to look a little bit better, but, you know, it's looking like Super Mario from the 90s there or whatever. So you kind of keep going. And then you might divide two again. And then you're starting to get close. Now this is where you start to make some decisions. Like, is this going to be far away in a train shot like this? And then you never think, or is it a real close-up shot? Since I'm kind of close up 3D modeling and I'm kind of in the middle of it, you know, so I usually I'm going higher, but I'll go two again. The computer's saying, hey, what are you crazy? But I'd be like, yeah, I'm crazy. And it goes, okay. And then you get a little bit something there like that. So that I can deal with. Now, when it gets cranked like that and the computer gives you that warning, it can be difficult to work. It's going to kind of like slow down on you. So you'll, you might have to go through and turn off stuff. It gets really annoying once you start adding cuts because everything is on top of each other when you turn it off. It's hard to look at. Um, so you kind of have to rely on your little uh, attribute manager and your object manager. You know, but you kind of work your way through it. So, I mean, all I did is I saw this thing sticking off a little bit. I was like, oh, let me fix that. Um, but you could be fighting that forever and always having like a line right there. So at some point, I'll just abandon it. I'll be like, oh, okay, well, that's close enough for me. And then this here, you can go like this. I'm going to cut that hole out. Now, I want it to be on the other side too. So I'm just going to grab a symmetry tool like that. Down there, down there. Let's just make sure it's going the right way. It's not. It's just right on top of itself. So mirror that. Perp. Okay. Then we have the cut. Boom. Go down into here and in the cut. Make this instead of union, subtract. And then you got those nice holes right there. I don't know, maybe this would look cooler if it was like that, and then, no, I take that back, I like it better like that. All right, so here we go, it's looking pretty cool to me so far. What's my next move going to be? Let's 
So I'm just going to dump this under here. Hide it. And it's, you know, it's just popped right in my face here. So let's just look at this. So this here we can make with a spline. And just go follow the center of this one right here. I mean, maybe it starts right there. Same deal, three points right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're only going halfway. We'll mirror it. That's one. I'm clicking here in the gray, deselecting that spline. Now when I go click again, I'm still in the mode. It'll make a new spline up there in the object manager if you watch. Boom. Okay, birds are singing. <laughs> All right. Do, 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 do. And then we got these, 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 and these. Uh, I'll probably just do those with like a little pill or something. I mean, they're really supposed to be half shocks, it looks like. So that might be kind of cool just to do it like that. But anyway, finish this job off here. Um, squares can be turned into circles with the uh, attributes circles cannot be turned into squares so if you go square you can always go circle um, but sometimes you do so i mean this thing kind of looks like a circle but this is what i'm talking about is when i go and sweep it down the line so i can take these two whoops sweep them down the line that always comes in funky so you just have to scale it down but boy does it look funky there huh so what you do is change this plane that could be cool for some abstract art or something, but this plane is what I'm looking for, right? This one right there. You put a little bit of rounding on there, and if you crank that, that's what I'm talking about. It becomes a circle. And then you want to scale it down like so. Yeah, and then you can play it around. Say, like, this is like 10. Make that 7, and this 10. So if you want to get something like that, 11 and 8. But whatever. I mean, I think it just looked pretty good like a, a circle like that. Now, let's see. I want to go and put this up along in the right positions. Probably in the center there, yep. I have that. You know, I'm just going to copy this. Replace that spline with this spline. That's just that little bottom detail there. Grab the two splines, go to point mode, grab all the points. Oh, by the way, by the way, would anybody be interested in watching people compete professionally doing this? You know, like you, you have um, people playing video games, for example, and then they, uh, I don't know, you know, there's like a whole stadium full of people. I was thinking, imagine two 3D modelers. And you're, oh, you're trying to 3D model this. It's, you know, it'd be the first one to finish it and finish it with the best quality. And then I thought it would be funny if um, a bunch of people judged it who knew nothing about 3D. <laughs> so it's like all the all the professionals are watching. And they're like, ah, this. There's no reason this person should have won. But the ignorant judges often times would pick the, uh, I don't know, maybe the inferior 3D model, and that'd be kind of fun, just to see the frustration of the these killer 3D modelers. All right, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Two man enter. It'd also be kind of cool if you did teams. I mean, imagine if Cinema 4D could work one day with uh, multiple people using it. So, like, I'm doing this, when you're just seeing this thing here being worked on, it just pops up. As I'm rotating around, you know, some other person's working on this, like, in uh, Japan or something, uh, while I'm working on, on this. And, you know, imagine 20 people are all working on this little thing. You each have, like, their little piece, and you see it come together. They'd have a rock and roll band playing in front. <laughs> yes. All right, let's see. So all I'm going to do here is lift it up a little bit. You know, my guide might be a little bit off from my uh, my 3D model. I don't know if I went and flattened this thing out. That's, that's a good example of um, having to go in after. You know, I didn't really do this process on these, and... 
I'm going to do it right now. Because as I look at it, it just starts to look kind of funny to me. So what that process was, was just select everything, you know, that's supposed to be flat. Watch out for your curves. You don't want to get all those. But select this stuff. Um, and zero it out. Now, if you have two splines selected, you can't use the coordinate manager. It just grays out. But you can still use this scale tool like this. And you just hold down over the one of the three axes, like this uh, Y one, and then click it and hit shift. And you're gonna see this little number up there. So bring that number down to zero. And that, oh, you know what? I'm missing some points here. Hold on, my selection got screwed up. Uh, let me see what I got. That's... Okay, so then same deal. Since I got two different splines, like that, hit shift, boom. Space bar gets me back into select mode. Space bar back into there, shift, click that, boom, space bar. Like that. Oops, don't want to get all those. Those are like my corner space bar. Boom. And if you want to get really anal, you can click this. Scale these two down. These. And so on and so forth, all the way up to the line. The Great Cinema Bake Off. Sounds like a pretty good name to me. I'm not sure if that implies... Um, Baking animations or that the people who are working are impaired. Either way, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So I got this a little bit straighter. Uh, like that. Do, 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 do. I once invented a game uh, with my cousin. We were, we were just drinking beers and I started treading water on the front of the dock. And I go, you know what? This would be a great contest. Two dudes treading water at the end of the dock and you keep handing them beers. <laughs> And see who can tread water the longest. And nobody else thought it was a good idea. Oh, man. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Pop this thing like that. All right, now it looks better to me. It's more straight. I'm just going to lift that up a little bit. I'm thinking. Let me just look at the guide. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, no, it looks like it touches the bottom. Okay, so that's that's what it's doing. So let's drop that into the volume builder. Boom. Did it merge? Yes, it did. Okay. Didn't look much different. Now, if you go into the volume builder, though, and you go to the top and say you hit the smooth tool, um, did that work? Okay, it's actually calculating it, I think. See how now it merged it in there with it. I'm just thinking here, like, if this number's too big, maybe I should go 0.5. Let's give the computer a little bit of a break here. Okay. Moving right along. So that wants to be symmetry. So let me just do that real quick. Boom. I'm going to turn this off while I'm working. Pop that symmetry down. These want to be together. So you can't have two children. You've got to make them have a null there. The uh, mirror plane's off. Boom, like that. Okay. But now I want it on the other side too. So I'm going to introduce another symmetry. Drag that down. Make that there. I'll take a look. Okay, that looks decent to me. I can turn it back on to see what it looks like. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Never thought I'd be here so good. All right, so there we go. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is those shocks. So the shocks looked like Tauruses. Now, if I go down to my guide right over here. Before I do that, actually, let me just put a cloner on it. Switch it to linear. And then drop it down. That's what we need is a new Blues Brothers movie. 
Alright, um, the ring radius here. Whoops, that's not it. The pipe radius. Yeah, that's it. Man, what do we want? What do we want? I'm going to up a little bit more. Three. Whoops, that's not right. It's sim it's symmetry object inception. Like the film inception maybe you're going for? I'm not quite sure. I like it though. I like it. Keep them coming. The algorithm likes it even more. 2.5. Well, seven. That's going to be close enough for me. Okay, so let's copy this with an instance. Like that. Now I can either make these children. I can make a couple more instances. Let's just make them children. Get a symmetry tool going. Boom. Drop that under there. Pick the right plane. Yep, okay. Now, let's take a look at this guy. Put them where they need to go. They're over here. They stick out. Uh, what am I doing looking at this one? Dun, 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 dun. So the thing is, I want it to be that wide. So watch this. I'm just going to hold down control and grab this deformer. It's called a FFD. And then make this a child of this. And let me just see if this is working. I, I thought I might have to move the points, but maybe it's just going to work for me. Oh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, that looks pretty close. I've always got to hide those things. They annoy me like that. All righty. Drop that. Now, the thing is, we need it to be on both sides. It's only on the one side. So another symmetry. <laughs> like that. Like this. Okay. And then drag and drop it underneath the uh, volume tool. Save it. Now, what's this looking like? Okay. Seems as though we lost our... Uh, Oh yeah, so I introduced this to the to the volume builder, right? So now check it out. It rearranged the hierarchy. You click on that volume builder, the second one down. You get this object manager within the, the attribute manager, but you want to make sure you put that smooth up top above everything. Then it's gonna put them back like that. Okay. Now let's do this little tank right here hide all this so I'm gonna turn that off too just in case and this little tank here I'm just gonna build it out of this because it's got these three pieces pretty similar boom Now the cloner spacing here, times, I don't know, three, no, a little bit more. Cinema has this cool little thing here. You can see I'm, my little cursor can go all the way over here, tens, ones, thousands, hundreds. Wherever you put it and you go up and down, it changes it incrementally that much. Now watch, I move over to the left and go up and down. It's incrementally changes it more as I go up and down. You know, it's a greater step. Tab over here. Up and down, it's a finer tune step. So I go over, I go over here, I fine tune it. That's pretty cool. I, I don't know who thought of that one. Somebody there with a name. Um, it's like when Steve Jobs, the, the guy that came up at the bottom screen here was some kid. And the kid went, he was sitting in the front and everybody's like, you know, scram, <laughs> beat it, get the hell out of here, kid. The kid's like, oh no, I have this, I have this idea, it's this idea. And it's the bar down here. And Steve Jobs happens to be walking out, and the kid's sitting there, and he goes, what are you, what are you doing here? It's total random, random. They weren't going to let him in. And uh, 
he he pitches it to Steve right then and there, and Steve's like, "Well, that's a great idea." And now here we're all using it. I don't know. That person's probably still alive. The kid, I don't know what he went on to do, but it's pretty interesting. So here I'm trying to make this shape. I'm thinking maybe I can just copy this. Um, current state this to an object like that. And then stretch it. Maybe with this tool. I, I guess I didn't really need to current set to it. No, that doesn't really look too good. Let's see if I can still make it out of it. Okay, there's that. Now what we're gonna do is mirror it over to the other side. Uh, there's my mirror tool symmetry. That boom. tweaking it a little bit a little artistic license here i just kind of decided i wanted to make it not squished um looking for the ad i just want to close that hole you can eat the donut but you can't eat the donut hole all right <sighs> did i put it under symmetry i did pop that underneath the volume builder remember when you go down there it screws the smooth up boom Save it. <laughs> Not sure what's going on with that. Something I screwed up. Hmm. Oh, uh, maybe it just needs some subdivisions. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to get rid of it. When in doubt, throw it out. Make this temporarily a child of this cloner. So, you know, that's where I'm trying to get to. Pop it back up out of the hierarchy. And slide it in. That I think I might prefer. No, it went into the symmetry tool, right? What's that? Let's see if that fixed my little problem. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Now, go back and look at this guy. Okay, we've got some wheels here. Let's crank those out. This is actually a teeny little lip right there. Zoom in. Mm 
Clearly not needed all those points, but whatever. You can always delete them after. I guess it can't go past that, right? Oh, no, it does. Well, I just want to make sure these two are the same height. So I'm scouting them like that. These guys here, I match the guide. The guide's cocked. Got to straighten it up. Looks all right to me. Close enough for government So what you got to do now is grab your lathe tool. And we're going to need to put it in this custom position. So bring it on down from the axis. Put it right about there in the center. Drop that under looks like horse so to get it better go to the null rotate tool instead of going like this to rotate you want it to rotate like this so you just spin the null axes like that boom now we go in here and use these other views right there to there to there to there to there whoops Not like that i'm gonna move the lathe Whoa, don't want to be in the axes tool though, like so. Boom, down to there. And let's take a look at what it looks like in here. I guess I don't really need to turn that on, but whatever. That's just shy of the side. And then same deal with the uh, symmetry. Yeah, be based. Oh, not up there. Right there. Okay, there's the wheels. Now it's got a little bar that goes across. Let's add that real quick. Got to make sure you're in object mode if you want to do that zero out trick. The zero out trick is when you just put it underneath a parent somewhere, zero it out, it moves the object there. Then you just lift it out. And the thing will go back to what it was being used for. And you can get on with what you were going to do. Whoops. Negative 90. Negative 270. Okay. That's a Lex Friedman joke. You might, might want to check his podcast out. Whole bunch of intellectuals and stuff. But it's pretty cool. And um, he says, how come people don't say 270 ever? And I've worked in 3D for like 20 years, and you never say 270. But 270 is the same as 90. It'll do the same thing. It's one of those funny things in life. Uh, I'm going to mirror this right there. Boop. Let me get it to pop over there. I'm going to have to change this. That. Bop, bop, bop. Boom. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. The ladder just caught my eye. I don't know about you, but that's what caught my eye. So, the ladder it is. I mean, this seems kind of like maybe a spline's the way to go. Maybe not. 
Let's just go with a uh, cylinder. A lot of ways to skin the cat in Cinema 4D. The same thing. I mean, there's like a, a lot of times, like three different ways to, to kind of accomplish the same thing. So you kind of have a lot of freedom to learn new ways to do something that you do it the same way. Maybe there's an advantage to it if you're doing it one one way. And if I was doing this with a spline, I could curve the bottom, maybe wrap the ladder around. Well, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm just looking to put a fillet up there. Okay, copy. Paste. I'm just going to put that in the clipboard real quick so I can add a symmetry tool to this guy. Okay, now I see that's a little off there. So I go in between the two like that. Copy this cylinder, and I'm going to take a cloner, drop it underneath there, and just zero that out. Rearrange that hierarchy. I'm going to switch the cloner over to linear. And let's see now. Usually what I do to do this, you can kind of go in the cloner, and you can adjust that through this transform right here. So say if I went 90, I could go through here, and I could find the one that's going to do it. If you don't want to do it that way and you're just in here, you can go like this, put it underneath a null, and then just rotate this thing, the 90. That's another way to do it. Uh, and sometimes it'll be easier for my brain to process it that way. I don't know why. So I'll end up doing it like that. Just I'm really, I'm really quickly in it. And I want to just do it with the object manager rather than have to go through the attribute manager. Another example of a way to do the exact same thing two different ways. These are always hard for me to adjust if I have the fillet on. So I'm going to have to shut that off. And go in here and figure out the right setting for the spacing. And then the right number of clones, five. Uh, you can also freeform move this like this. You can kind of get it and match your guy like that. And then you get on here and just zero everything out that was not up and down. Let's see what happens to these when I put it underneath this. Uh... Remember, you put it in here, you got to rearrange this, get the soft selector up top. I'm thinking the soft selector is going to fix that problem for me. Yep. Boink. Okay. I'll pop down into here. Nothing really there. What's this, a chain or something? Oh, it's this. Let's add that real quick. No time like the present. My brain just zoned in on so there we go. These two things aren't really jiving. So let's go in here. But kind of going off of this one a lot. Like show. Looks pretty good. Give it a little fillet. All right. Now, did that get? No, I don't think it got smaller at the top. Okay. In the middle of it, it has a connector right here and here and here. So, but let's see. Let me mirror this to the other side, like so. <laughs> And then let's draw, oh geez, look at that. That's a completely different part. I should be right here. <laughs> Let me just update this real quick. I'm a fool to do your dirty work no more. Dun, 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 dun. Nights in white satin. It's supposed to go all the way down to the bottom. Share, it's a little bit off. Wow, I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do. 
but let's just like that for starters. And then let me trace this off with a, I guess it doesn't really matter right there. I mean, I could just use a cube, so let me just do that. Current saving it to an object, going into point mode. Scale these two out to match that. I'm gonna grab these up here and drop them down. It's actually pretty thin and it goes right in the back tucks like that. Looks good. Take those two, group them, make a symmetry tool. Fix the, the plane there like that. Drag and drop them underneath this volume tool. Put the smoother on top. Looking pretty good. Now, let's see. Do, 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 do. You, my fine feathered friend, need to be slightly wider, I think. Psst. Okay, let's take a look at everything else here. What do we got going on? So, I don't know what these are. Oh, that was the ladder. Uh -huh. That's actually the angle of the ladder. Interesting. I think that'll be close enough for me for today. But it does want to have uh, symmetry on the other side. So that's this one. Boink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got that figured out. Now let's see what else we got to do. We've got this little bar that goes around this guy right here this is when it really starts to look like it i think so let me turn that back off add that piping I'm right here I'm actually just going to turn everything hide everything temporarily like that and let's go ahead and draw boom you picked a fine time to leave me luann I turned to look, and <laughs> she was gone. <laughs> All righty. Now look at these little cool things. <laughs> I'm just going to go in there and grab them real quick. Boop, boop. So I'll just revolve that one while I'm hot on it. Move it over here. Just sort of. Put it in the center of this thing, drop that underneath there. It goes haywire. You go up to the axes tool, adjust the null, and it's doing absolutely nothing. Boom, it was this null. Oh, there we go. Pop that over to B spline, smooth it all out, copy this thing, or make a instance. There you go. Boom. Slide it up. 
Slide it up. Now, what about that line we made earlier? Let's grab a circle this time. What the hell? And then we will go sweep. Uh, there's a really good Mr. Beast interview on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, any, it just caught my attention. It was pretty cool. He was talking about being a kid, going to school, doing YouTube. And I can't really talk and work at the same time, but check it out. It's pretty cool. It's inspiring if you want to try to uh, do anything that's, you know, not necessarily mainstream. And maybe you're one of the first people ever doing it. All right, here we go. Lathe, what am I doing here? Take these two, make them children of the sweep. That's how that tool works. And then scale down that circle. You could tell something's screwed up because it's flat as a pancake. So go in here and flip around these. There you go. Boom. Now, let's take a look at this in 3D. Hard to say. I'd say, you know, this is probably supposed to be straight right here, you know. So I'm just going to turn that off. Go like this. Mm -mm -mm. And then zero it right here. And just straighten that sucker out a little. Boink. Okay. I don't know. It's still popping out right here. I don't know. Whoa. Oh, okay, that's why it's so screwed up. Okay, let me do that again. If you're in axes mode, it doesn't do anything to the object. Got to make sure you don't have that on. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure this beast plan. Should we just be that on default? But whatever. Here we go. Mirror it. Mirror it. Symmetry. Drop it under. Boom. Oh, you know what? Make it a child. Of it all, because we got some brothers and sisters we're going to throw in there too. Boom. And make another symmetry tool. Flip it over to the other side. Pick that. Boom. Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay, now it looks like i got to move it out a little. So, you know what I mean? This is an approximation. My guides are completely, totally warped, like I was explaining to you in the very beginning. So... Just pretend that you're working. You say, well, close enough for government work. And you move on. You abandon it. Every artist must abandon their work. And I learned a new one, too. Your work is therapy. So if you're an artist, you know, doing your work is your therapy. That was kind of cool. I was like, oh, that's pretty okay. I like that. Like that. Yeah, and I get a huge dopamine release working on these things. I love it. I always have, ever since the very beginning. I think it all started watching Toy Story, maybe having played with Legos and making bike jumps. <laughs> Somewhere in between there, that kind of fun carried through for me anyway, working on this stuff. So I've been doing it for like 20 years. And I can sit here like the Buddha underneath a tree and do this solid for just days straight if I have someone who's paying for it. You know, I'll get exhausted like anybody else, but it is really fun, and it's always great to see the work at the end. You know. Okay, enough talking. What do we got left on this sucker? It's got these coverings on these wheels right here, and they're kind of funny looking, but I think we might want that. Uh, it looks really fat from the side here. It's got this black piece here, and then it's got this funky little piece here. So I can't tell what the heck it is from this angle, to be honest with you. Um, I do have a underside shot right there. Uh, you know what I mean? It gives me some information, I guess. It tells me that they're thin and that those are thick. So, wow, they just look so funny from the side. They look like flat. But all right. Let's see. Uh, uh, I'm just going to start off with this one here. Click anywhere. Back into this tool. Activate this guy. And we'll jump right in. Do, 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 do. Kind of try to wrap this up here for you all. So you can get on with your important day. All 
Anybody out there ever play that video game Thexter on a Tandy 1000? It was really cool music. You fly around this little uh, dude who could transform. He could walk. Or he could turn into uh, like a jet thing. All right, I better be careful. I'm not talking too much while I'm trying to work here. I'll... Let's see. Yeah, looks a little weird. This is what I was kind of saying before, where you just like get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna mirror this thing, because no matter what, it always looks screwed up. But if you mirror it, and I might need to. Ding, 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 As you start doing this for a while, you're, you're, you kind of start just watching. <laughs> oh, uh, somebody's actually working here, but it isn't you. Doo, 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 doo. It just goes on automatic pilot. So let me go over here. I'm going to mirror this. Boink. Don't, don't, don't. Like so, put that in about the center, give it some 3D depth right there. Ooh, I am dying a cotton mouth. Let's see, put this here, mirror that to that. Now my symmetry tool, I wanna make sure, okay, I've got it there. Boom. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. Sure would be nice to have some water. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> boy. Okay, Bert. <laughs> if I get you the water, will you shut up? <laughs> Then he gets the water. Ernie goes back to sleep. I might have him flip flop. Bert chugs the water down. And he's done with it. He goes, I sure am thirsty. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, the guy loses it. It's great. And he promises he'll never say it again. Goes, I sure am hungry. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Okay. Let's get this over here. Boom, boom, boom. Now, you know what? I probably should just mirror that. What the heck am I doing? Got that. Let's grab another symmetry. Pop it under there. Put this over here. Oh, look at that. That looks great. Oh, I really like that. Okay. Now I need a little cube. Where are you, cube? Where are you, cube? What are you, cube? What are you, square? Huh? What are you, square? Boom. As opposed to what? Round. Yeah, that'd be great. Just these little polygon primitives. Days of our lives. You're going to marry the pyramid, says the cylinder. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's put a little fillet on there. No, I'm really just sort of making this up right now. But let me just look at the the ref the reference here really quick. Okay, so it's like this. It's like that. I'm just kind of like getting this just here to like wrap it up. All right, let's see. Boo, 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 boo. Let me see if I can add a brother or sister to this. 
like so. That's going to pop them in there. Now we need to mirror that all over to the other side. Another symmetry. Well, a lot of symmetries there. One, two, three. And this one over there. Okay. I'm thinking that this could be it, folks. Oh, the top. The top. We don't want to forget the top. Okay. So, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. See that piece around the top right there? Watch this. I'm going to grab a circle. Rotate the circle like this. Now the circle is made of this spline here, so I can do this trick with it. So I'll make it about the diameter. It looks like it's going to be something like that. Now I'll turn this back on. Click this view here. Well, let's just make it a little bit bigger. Click this view here. Go up to spline, move. Hey, wait a minute. Why can't I project it? Hmm. You know what? Current state to an object first. Okay. I guess it wasn't a spline. It was a pr platonic primitive circle. Okay. Now it's just a point cloud. Well, I guess it still thinks of it as a circle, but it'll work for this. Boom. Project. See this little gray line around this top window? Hit apply. Boom. Look at that. I love that. And let's just do a little... Let's just do a little sweep with a square because you always turn it into a circle if you want, but I don't think I will this one. Make these guys there. The circle goes on top. Wait a second. The rectangle goes on top. Scale it down. Kind of look at the guide here. And then add a little bit of this rounding. Let me look sort of nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll do. Now we want this guy here, old cylinder action, zero them out under that circle, just temporarily, make sure you're up there, boom, pop them out, go down here, boom. Just gonna increase the subdivision going around here. Segments 32. And now, I think for me, a fast way to hit that one would just be to go whip, boop, 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 boop. And then just grab my revolve tool. I think this one's in the center, so we might be able to just drop it. Switch this to the old B splinerino. Oops, the computer still thinks I'm in uh, draw a line mode, so you gotta just like click some stuff and get out of that. And get back in. I just wanna move the point, I don't wanna add anymore. I think, was that what I wanna do? Sure, so look at this thing. First thing I wanna do is. Zero that out. Boom. Now, next thing I want to do is put this at the... Is that right? No. Okay. Ah, it kind of goes against the guide, but... Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Wait a minute. Where the heck is it? Okay. I'm going to move this so it's in a better position. This actually affects how it scales. I want it to scale from like right there. Okay. Scale that sucker up. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Now, make a cylinder. Let's just copy this one. Boom. Put over here. Okay, lift that sucker up. Put a fillet on there. Well, put a bigger fillet on there. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's a fillet. That's a fillet. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to make fillet. Walk uphill both ways to school. Uh, boom, boom, boom. 
Hey, wrong mirror plane. You got the wrong mirror plane. Ooh. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Kimball. All right. Boom. Uh, <laughs> see these little dots on the top? I mean, can we not? Can we got to do those, right? How do you do it? How do you do it? Grab a cue, grab a cloner, to do, up a do do. Now let's just line this up with the guide. <laughs> Tell me this isn't like magic. Tell me. I don't know what I'm doing. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Probably by nine. It's a circle. Let's do ten. I did. No, I'm just going to sort of line this up. Well, actually, I'm in the center, so I'm going to ignore my guide. So I'm in the center of the universe here. My guide says go to the left, but I'm, I'm going to ignore that impulse. Boom. Yeah, looks close enough to me. Whatever. Here we go. Boom. Make that fill at point one. Ooh, point five. Yeah, okay. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Okay, turn this stuff back on. See what I'm doing. Lift. You can lift me up. Wow, totally off, right? Isn't that great? But it's on. It's lined up on the side guide, not lined up on the top guide. Ah, what are you gonna do? No one will be the wiser when we're done. Because they won't have that list of those two different images to scrutinize. They'll just be kind of beholding what is before their face. So let's just get rid of the corners there. Current state this to an object that's close enough for me. Now, hide everything. Hide everything. And I think I want that still. Let's see, what am I supposed to get rid of here? These two. I guess I can start with that. <laughs> boom. Little boom, 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 boom. Well, the rock's not alive. No, 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 no. It doesn't eat or be the grow. And that is how you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, grab the wrong ones. <laughs> now you know what we gotta do is make that a child of that, like so. See, so doesn't like that. You gotta make a make a brother and sister. Then it likes it. Okay, boom. Now I'm gonna take these and just add them to the volume, so it, it'll move. It'll just sort of blend this out right here. So let's do that real quick. And then we might be uh, down to texturing here. Let's see. This wants to go in here. Boom. Make sure you got your smoother on top. Save the scene. Let's just preview this real quick. Whoops, wrong button. Boink. I should make these look cooler, hopefully. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Well, you know, that might be like too much on that. So, check this out. Move the smoother down one. Try running that without the smoother on it. Uh -huh. Looks a little cooler. I mean, this looks kind of crappy. Can I fix that? Yeah, cylinder, I can add more. So, you see a 32 at 122. Seems crazy, but I think that's what it wants. Yeah, see that? Boom. Then the little segments on the bevel make five. Usually three, but make five, and then I'll smooth this right here out where my mouse is. 
sort of. All right. Well. Oh. Fill it segment with go five. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that did it. The caps, the little things like this, then it's the side. So I was hoping for them. Okay. Boom. Yeah. I said we're doing pretty good right here. Let me just take a look at this thing in my hand. Okay, I think we're good. I think it's going to take, you know, put some text. I'm not really going to go with the full length and put the whole Sunoco thing right here. I'm just going to kind of give it the black and the silver. And then we'll take a look at our render. So save this. Let's. You know, I don't. I'm not the best at the, the textures to make them um, very weathered. But I'll tell you who's great at it. Matt Rittman. If you YouTube Matt Rittman, he is an incredible Cinema 4D artist, and he'll use a lot of other programs, um, you know, like I think maybe Substance, and he'll use, he got me to use Corona Render for, for quite a long time, and then, yeah, but if you check out his stuff, he'll, he'll show you like how like a machine gun works, or how like different, very mechanical things, and if you notice, the textures on the guns will look very weathered and cool. Um, kind of like little nicks, little scratches, a little bit more real. So if you did this, if you brought this into Substance, you would just be able to create these cool rusted edges and stuff really quickly. And the program really kind of helps you do it. And then you bring it back into cinema. Um, I'm kind of like, my little widget in front of my face is always like 3D modeling. So everything else is like you're putting the hat on, but I tend to sort of just be more interested in this aspect of it so i kind of just keep getting distracted with making more of these little things so my textures are kind of will suffer from that um so yeah i'm just gonna kind of make this as if it was sort of like new so i'll rely sometimes on the asset browser and just look for like paint and see so like this black one i imagine that might be what it's like when it's new and this this kind of looks cool too for the tank maybe and the wheels so let's try that and just see what it ends up looking like. So the volume builder is everything that's that black color, I'm pretty sure. And then everything else is like the silver color except for these. So that's a little bit of a screw up. When you're using the volume builder tool, the texturing aspect of it's not the best. So what I could do to get around that, since I want these to be silver, is just turn it off real quick, make a copy of it, um, hide it. Now down in here, remove that element. And this one, so then hide that other one. And this one here, keep everything but that. You know what I mean? I mean, the exact opposite of what I just said. <laughs> Delete everything but that. Then you get rid of the texture. Okay, boom. That's the way you do that. Now you can have that silver texture on those. And everything else. I just, I think, put it up here. I'll turn everything else the color I want. Boom. Oh, you know what? Those little pieces down there were black right there. Let's just do that because that'll help it pop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a kid in the candy shop right here. Let's see what it looks like rendered. So I'm going to pop in uh, one of my other scenes. Beep, boom. We'll go grab this guy. Right here. Copy him, save him. And throw it in here. Alrighty. Just going to double check my rendering settings here. So I want to make sure this is on physical. Global illumination on default. Turn my volumes on. All right. And then let's take a look at this thing. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. These were a slightly different one. Let me just do this really quick. And that's, that's going to be another thing with this volume of this guy here, which I think is this. Let's see. It's the color of the ladder and the pipes going around. I just noticed looking at the model that they are actually not this black color. So watch this. I'm just going to pull this out like so. Copy and paste this. Delete everything. 
right there. Delete everything. Delete everything. Pop that in there. Get rid of that. And turn them on. Let's see if this accomplishes what I'm looking for. Okay. Now what I can do is I can make like a um, a brass or something. I think it's a brass. It's probably co is it copper or brass? I don't know what it would be. Maybe brass. Mash. Brass tarnish sounds good to me for right now. And then we'll go through and then put that on these pieces here. And you know I like to put it. Um, where are you, baby? I like to put it on cubic. So something up there. Throw it on cubic. And then let's hit that ladder. Cubic. Well, does that look cool? Might look cool, but we'll put it on cubic there. Okay. Yeah, that looks cool. All right. Well, let's take a look at the render now. Oh, yeah, let me just close that. It's kind of a fun part. You're, just, you're done playing, and then you get to kind of see what does it look like when all the lights are turned on. And, you know, little things are reflecting, that kind of stuff. Looks pretty cool. You know, from a distance, I think someone's like, hey, that looks like a little oil train cart thing. All right, thank you very much. If you have any questions, if you want to talk about your experience with the Cinema 4D scene, if you grab that scene today, this is the first time that was available. Again, requested by the viewers. There's something like uh, 700 subscribers. Two of them recommended this after I was talking about it. You know, use the Google Drive and please can you put the guides up before you start your show so I'll, I'll do that every time from now on i'll share that google drive um and then you'll have the cinema 4d scene with the guides and if you want to purchase the 3d model you'll also see a link once i'm done i'll upload this to turbo squid this will go up to turbo squid it won't be very expensive it's going to be based on the 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 value of other 3d models on turbo squid it's not so much value of my rate per hour, which is 6750 per hour, if anybody's interested um, to have me 3D model for you on a project, I'd be happy to do that. I do that actually quite a bit for a lot of people. If you see that I'm not doing a show, that means either something's going on with the family or I am in an intense project, heavily 3D modeling something. So um, yeah, if you have any ideas or something you want me to 3D model, let me know. If you have any questions with the program, the whole idea um, for me to do this is is a, a living portfolio. So I'm, I'm really not really doing this to, to necessarily make money. I do do 3D to make money. That's my whole bag. But this is to sort of help me become um, sort of a helpful person on the internet to anybody who's learning the program. And what I get for that is when clients are coming to me, I, I look like more of an authority on the topic. Cinema 4D, 3D modeling, um, that's my bag. So if you're interested in that and you want to learn more, stay tuned, subscribe, interact in the comments, or email me at jasonchambers at gmail.com. My name's J-A-S-E-N, chambers at gmail.com. Let me know what you've got going on, and um, I will try to incorporate it into the show or have fun working on a project for you. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow with any luck. Enjoy your day.